Morning everybody, this is Alex with the Cast Fly Shop Oregon Fly Fishing Blog here. Tying the knot, your average popper. Uh, this is one I've seen over, just been seeing pretty recently in the past couple years and it is strange. Um, and a lot of people use them for uh, predatory fish like GTs, peacock bass, uh, any kind of bass species. Uh, I think you really just need a big chug and popper. So let's get started here. I'm going to start off with an dot hook. Yes, that seems huge, but in order to get this to um, ride down and help it balance out, we need that big hook to, for as part of a counterbalance. So I'm going to start off with Vivas 0.2 monofilament thread. And this will help when, uh, with that glue bond I've talked about in a couple different videos. We want that with the foam. So I lay this a nice coat of this down the shank of this hook. up here and trim that. So what I'm going to do is find a, I even brought in a couple bucktails here. I'm going to try to find the longest fibers I can. I'll find them down a little bit closer to the base of the bucktail but not to where it flares up too much. Put a pretty generous amount here. Pull out some of the under fur. That looks good. I'm going to make it just a little more sparse. You don't want it too sparse though because I think uh, the bucktail kind of helps with it um, riding as well. Kind of keep gives it something to float in the back. I'll keep the butts pretty close together here so it doesn't make too big of an impact on my... Something like that. Yeah, that looks good. You always check your flies on both sides. Remember to use your rotary feature. Okay. And then I will just take some UV Bucktail White SF Blend. I like this one because it has a little more, it's more saturated, kind of has more of a white um, fiber to it. The other stuff's kind of more clear, which is totally fine. Um, but for this, it kind of just supplements when you're using white bucktail. So I'm going to kind of get two pretty decent strands here. So I want this to be pretty thick. Nothing crazy, so I'll fold it over the top, kind of match it up here, lay it down, lay that right over the top. And see, it just makes it almost look like a nice piece of flashy bucktail. And see how I just kind of wrap it up front, over the top of it? I'm not trying to create this big problem like to where when I put this head on here, it won't slide on. So, really you keep this stuff pretty sparse for the most part. So I'm going to wrap up, tame that just a little bit, start heading back towards the eye of the hook. And this will take a couple times, like I try to not have, I want this to be pretty uniform and even on the hook shank, which doesn't take much. So we're about there right now. Alright. Can I take some of this, get my handy dandy deer hair comb. I'm going to trim some of these tips just a little bit so we get a little more clean here. Alright, now I'm going to whip finish that off. And if you so desire, you can put feathers in the back of this. Um, the only reason I'm not doing as much of that is I like to try to avoid feathers sometimes just for A, durability reasons and B, availability for a lot of people. So this kind of gets your mass, the bulk, and it's just really light to throw. Um, today I'm going to use, oh yeah. I'm going to do one more whip finish just in case I forgot. Okay. Today I'm going to use the Zappagap gel. This is more for uh, foam and it will dry a little slower, a little thicker substance. You can use either one. I just wanted to try this today because when I've used regular Zap, it does not want to... Um, ooh, that's coming out nice. Okay. So I'm going to lay some on the back, just a nice bead of it, it's like you're caulking some tile or something. <laughs> Always try to remember to keep the lid on this stuff, it'll be hardened on my table probably here in 15 minutes, just kidding. Alright, here we go. And so with the popper head, 
I like to kind of come in from the side and get it on there so I can kind of get more glue on the inside of this. Get this feather fluff off of me. So I'll bring it here right up to the hook eye. And then I grab this tail. And this is kind of an important part. I'll get that tail kind of up in here. Set it to where it goes like that. So now we're about set on there. I'm going to bring this down. Just over a little bit. I'll try to pinch this in here. I'm going to trim some of this residual material here. Watch your glue. And I'm going to lay another bead of the... Uh, we don't got to get too deep in here. I know this like popper head kind of has it so you do it. I like it so I can barely just kind of pinch it over. But you don't want it too much. Because you want this thing to be able to ride flat. And not just sit like a big old buoy on the water. Here we go. We'll get the sides here nice. And then pull your material back before you get this set in and get this stuff here. Because this back part will help with the balance of things. So push that back. I'll push it back just a little bit more even. Here we go. Get that material up and don't be afraid to you not need to be conservative with glue sometimes. Okay, so we have everything nice and glued. Now I'm going to position it. I don't like that. And I'll hold this pretty tight. And the main thing here is to make sure it gets glued. Um, I know that sounds like a very obvious thing to say, like, yeah, no duh. But I'll sit, I mean, you really do want to sit here and pinch it. The pressure kind of helps get it cured. Um, and this white, I've been having a little trouble with it wanting to uh, stick to itself. So that's why we're trying this gel today. Um, but if not, as long as it bonds to the um, your mono, that's why I use that mono thread. And then you can lay this glue in there again, like if you get a space. But I don't think we'll get that today. Keep that pinched down. But even if I do, which it, it looks like it actually might happen. I'm going to pinch this for another good 20 seconds. Um, and then you'll see why I like to use the gel. Because then I can lay another bead in there if it doesn't totally bond together like that. Which we're close. Try to lay a little more in there. The other thing I like about using this for foam is it does dry a little slower. So if it just kind of hardens up, it's hard. Like once the foam hardens up, it's hard to get the glue to stick to it. Uh, stick to the foam. If you kind of get catch my drift, because once you have a hardened piece of foam and trying to glue it to another hard piece of foam isn't. It's a little bit more difficult. So here I, I notice this little bead. I'm going to grab the back of my whip finish and kind of use it as a bobkin. Or bodkin, not bobkin. Okay. So we're, I'm going to let that dry for a little bit. And I'll come back in with my glue and readjust everything. And so see that glue is already kind of helping it set in there. But right there is a very throwable, uh, very effective popper. All right, thank you.